Hello, so today I want to talk about Poison and Pharaohs converted to physical, basically the build that I did for the for season 4 and at this point I'm basically done. I'm not looking for more upgrades, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable doing 20 plus 27 maps, it's not a big deal. I'm not dying so that's another thing and I want to talk about this build a little bit more, a little bit more in depth. I'm not gonna talk about my skill board that much, I'm just gonna talk about some of the mechanics and some of the decisions that I did. Maybe this is gonna be a good educational video on how to approach some other builds as what I'm gonna talk about is probably gonna be more of a general stuff instead of something specific to this build. So let's talk about my skill board. Let's go quickly over it. So basically, I'm using Poison Rain of Arrows Awakening to Origin. Amplify Physical Projectile uh, uh, Awakening to Origin. Deadly Poison Awakening to Verity. So I could apply the dot. Otherwise, you can't apply the dot when you have this. Convert Physical Damage, you can't awaken this one. Multi-Shot Awakening to Verity for Projectile Damage Amplification per Projectile Tag. But, I don't know if it works by the way, I really don't know, it's really weird. I didn't test it, I didn't bother about it, cause the awakening on multi-shot is either way not that good, so I didn't, I, I don't mind it that much. On Shadow Archer, I'm running plus two projectile count, as this build gets so much damage just from the projectile count, so it makes sense to go for the Shadow Archer Verity. And on Quick Attack, I'm running Origin. But this is where my first thing that I want to talk about is the Quick Attack. Basically, this late into the build, doesn't matter what build you do, you really don't want to use any links that give you attack speed because you should be able to camp your attack speed just from your items and from your Zodiacs. But I kind of didn't craft a lot of items so I'm stuck with quick attack right now. And this would be the first thing for me to change to get an upgrade. So it's, it's really simple. And what I'm looking at is actually this. I'm looking for, where is that big boy? I'm looking for this one. Maximize damage increase. So why this link is so good and why I want to change it? And the answer is really simple. It's because it gives you max, plenty of maximized damage and it gives you strike damage amplification on top. So it's already not a bad link to change from quick attack. But there is a reason why I can't do it. And the main reason is that and remember, this is maximized damage. This is really important one because that maximized damage counts towards your double maximized damage and triple maximized damage. And the problem I have right now is my charms because I just can't roll a chance to deal maximized damage on a hit. This is my biggest problem right now. If I had another two charms that give me on legendary prefix chance to deal maximized damage on a hit, that maximized damage increased link rune would be so much better than the quick attack I have right now. But I keep rolling strike damage amplifications, which is good by the way, which is really good. But I just can't hit this node and that, because of that, I can't change my link rune. Right now, it gives me 7.7, .7, which is okay. And if you look at my stats, I have 12.6, tw uh, and I have 7.7 .7 maximized, triple maximized, which is according to the charm, right? And extra 5% on this one actually comes from my speaker relic, which gives me 5% chance to deal double maximized damage. So this is basically one of the things that people try to do later into the game is to somehow roll these legendary prefixes and get that insane damage boost. Cause even if you roll 
even without that maximized damage link rune, just by rolling this legendary prefix, your damage just skyrockets, by the way. It's insane damage increase. It starts to get lower the more you have, but I would say like two, three charms, your damage is gonna skyrocket. If you have like three charms, it's gonna be crazy good. Just remember, you don't want to lose too much critical damage. Where is it? Yeah, you don't want to lose too much critical damage. I would say even right now, I'm kind of on the lower side. I would love to have like eight to nine, eight, 800 or 900, something in that in that area. That's why I'm still using this charm. This charm gives me insane amount of damage jump, but yeah. This is one of the things. If you're looking at my inventory, I want to talk right now about my bow. And the main thing I want to talk about is this no is this affix. Additional poison damage on every hit basically. So it this one it doesn't have to be on your bow early. It can be on your zodiacs or your lacrima. But for this specific build, when you convert to physical damage, you want to have additional poison damage on every hit. And the reason why because in my case i'm using deadly poison and deadly poison amp only works against the enemies that are affected by venom even though my skill tooltip has a venom chance but because it's converted to physical you no longer do poison damage so you need to do poison damage in order to apply venom and that's why I have that one on my bow. And this is basically gonna be the last bow that I craft this season. As this is goes as good as it can go. I have four prefixes in here. I have physical damage, speed, poison on every hit, and attack damage on the weapon. And then two for my attack damage multi and gear critical rate suffixes, right? So this is basically as good as it goes for me. And I will... Uh, at least for me, I'm not gonna try to do anything better. But that's the idea of how on on how does the basically Venom work on this Poisoning of Arrows build that is converted to physical damage. You can apply the same logic to any other build that has a similar mechanic. And this is a good time for me to show the energy stuff that I'm running on my build. And a lot of builds are running this right now. So if you check, I'm generating a lot of energies right now. I have fire energy, earth energy, cold energy. And if I hit it for a long enough time, I'm also gonna generate some poison energies and some lightning energies also. So let's talk about this right now, right? So how do I do this and what's the deal? So let's stop that one. So the main idea of this is that I'm running Illusion Axe converted to fire, which is simple to understand. And I'm extracting those fire energies from an Illusion Axe and I'm running Blood Explosion Convert it to cold damage and I'm extracting those cold energies and at the same time Because blood explosion needs a bleed stacks to activate Whenever it activates it has 20% chance to give me one earth energy So that's why I had fire cold and earth energies first because those are the easiest to generate for me as I have the most chance to generate those so where does the poison energy and where does the lightning energy comes from? And that answer is really simple. It's the Boreal's Horizon belt. And this belt is really, really good. So what happens with this? So first of all, it gives you two max energies. It gives you energy duration and it gives all energy effect. And then 
it gives you a chance to generate extra energies on the skill use. It's not a big chance, it's only 8%, but it's enough in the long term, especially if you are doing some Descent Raid bosses. Actually, it even stacks on the map, but you kind of have to blast and you can't stop blasting. You have to go forward really fast. So that belt basically enables me to sustain those. And on the Extract Energy node, you can see there is a 4% chance to gain random energy on hit. This is basically the biggest portion of this. As, first of all, for the Boreal Belt to work, you need to gain that energy that you want to, to get. So... Whenever I get one stack of poison or one stack, stack of lightning energy, my Boreal's belt starts to work as it gives chance to get that energy at 8% chance, right? Lightning energy plus one with 8% chance on using skill if owning lightning energy. So basically that's the idea. So it comes from extract energy to gain a random energy on hit. And then whenever you get that energy, you get additional 8% chance to sustain it. That would be the idea. That's how I'm running five energies right now. Why are we looking at my items? Two more items that I want to talk about, but these are basically really good uniques that almost any build can use. So. That's a Caprice Hat Necklace. This one gives you fire damage on every hit, an insane amount of it. Gives you insane amount of crit damage and gives you max energy stacks. So, as you can see, I'm only running four out of five max energy stacks, but that's only because I get two energies from my Boreal's Horizon and because my rolls on the fire damage on every hit is kinda high and kinda high critical damage, I didn't roll into 5, but this necklace gives you insane amount of damage just from the base and at the same time you get insane amount of damage just from the energies. It, this one is really simple. And another one is Castle Refraction. This is a low tier one cause the high tier one costs kinda a lot, but even low tier one gives you a lot of critical rate. So basically, this is a critical flat rate. There is only one another source that you can get critical flat, and that source is your weapon. This is critical rate flat. So if you look at this and we look at the values, I have 28.5% flat critical rate from my weapon, and then 14 flat from my ring. So if you think about it, it's basically third of my crit flat comes from my ring, which is an insane amount as it is also multiplied by the attack critical rate. So that rings, that ring, even on a bad roll, gives you around third of your critical value, which is insane in a lot that because it enables you to choose a little, a little bit different charms if you are on the cheaper side, right? If you can't drop critical rate once, that rings, that ring basically enables you to use some other ones and still don't lose that much benefit out of it. So this one is really good ring. I didn't even remove it right now because removing that fourteen, oh, wrong ring to remove though. Removing that 14 drops down my crit to 360, which on 160 maps, on 160 level maps, it's not nearly enough. Even with this ring, I'm still not capping my crit on 160 level maps, by the way. I'm really close, but still not yet. And another thing is, 
that you get a little bit of extra crit from elaborate attack because this is a flat critical chance multiplier. Remember that one also. We can check my other items, but I'm not really proud of them. I kinda didn't drop any gear transfer stones, partial ones, and I didn't bother to go for the reversions. So, my bowcraft is probably the best I did this season. And I got plus 2 gear critical rate on my bow, but this node is not as good. Because you have the ring, and the ring kinda makes it less valuable. My helmet is basically double authority, which is actually not a bad helmet. Could be a little bit better, but I'm, I was kind of cheapo on my Vespas. My shoulders would be my next upgrade path, as my shoulders are basically th this ones I crafted maybe like second week into the season. I didn't change those. I was kind of lazy. Armor is the same, like just one authority, and. This would be my next craft up at the shoulders. Just like some HP, some armor multi, and enhanced skill rune duration, right? My gloves are actually not bad. My gloves are basically bis, but I need more Vespas. Basically, I need to get my attack speed amplification up. And my legendary roll is bad, so I can talk a little bit more about this one. So basically, this is double flat gloves. Physical damage, physical damage, plus area damage multi. And because I knew that I'm gonna need to use more Vespas on this, I legendary those gloves and I got immune to shock. But these gloves are not broken because I could use a reversion, basically legendary reversion, remove the legendary node and then use Vespas again. But I think I'm gonna save it this. I'm kinda have enough damage. I'm not even I'm not even bothering anymore. But yeah, this is this is pretty good gloves. A little bit higher affixes, and those would be best basically. And of course, a good legendary mo mod would make the would make these gloves even more powerful. My boots, I don't know. I didn't do much on these. I went for gear dodge rate. I, cause I'm running a little bit of armor and a little bit of dodge, that's another thing. I only roll attack and hand skill rune effect, as this one, this authority gives me a lot of damage when I'm using enhance my marksman basically. But it's it's nothing it's nothing crazy by the way. It's nothing crazy. My ring has pulverize, and maybe this is a good time to talk about it. Pulverize effect basically it and it's on the speaker relic you can choose active skill that's called pulverize and pulverize is basically gives you bleed chance and damage amplification against bleeding enemies so this is a better choice if you are doing hardcore because this gives you plenty of amp so if you count the this effect, so it's 12% right, plus 23, so it's gonna be 12% damage amp. Plus my ring that I rolled, it's gonna be 50%, so it's 17.2% damage amp. And that's gonna be on par, or a little bit more, than caster that gives you physical damage amplification. But, there is a one big but. I don't like to use caster sensory stimulation on hardcore because I don't know if this bug is fixed but this damage taken increase node is actually affected from from the curses and what happens it gets multiplied and then your damage taken increase gets higher than your defenses that you have in here and it goes into the negative that's the main reason why i'm not using that and why i am using pulverize but it only applies on hardcore on on seasonal normal or standard i mean it doesn't matter if you die you just restart right but that's the main idea of this
and my quiver is garbage. I'm, I'm not gonna talk about this one. I have some cold energy effect to stack a little bit of more damage dampening, elemental damage dampening, because I'm not melee, I can't use fighting spirit, so I really need this one, but yeah. We can look at some other stuff on my skill board, but it's not actually, it's not really that like mind blowing of what I'm doing on my skill board, but I'm gonna explain some stuff. So basically, I'm using Shout of Provocation and I'm running Shout of Power because I don't have uplift effect on my Zodiacs. So this is nice damage increase. It's only for three seconds, but it's it's better than nothing. And another thing why I'm using Shout of Power because it gives Shout Skill Rune duration and Shout Skill Rune effect. So if you look at my Shadow Provocation, my cooldown is like sub 5 seconds and my duration is sub 8. So this is always on 100% uptime. Easily, always 100% uptime. That's one thing. Another thing that I want to talk about is my Bulwark of Protection. And the way the maps work right now, I think Bulwark of Protection is the best choice because of the cursed enemies. Because this one gives you ammo multiplier, gives you elemental resistances, and gives you damage taken dampening. And this is a big deal. Because those cursed enemies that you fight right now in high level maps, decreases your ammo, can decrease your ammo, elemental resistances, and all the dampenings that you have. So this is really nice to have. It's uptime, it's not that high, because the cooldown only starts, then the skill ends. So it's like 8 second cooldown and 6 second duration. So the uptime is only around 60%, but this is more than enough. And I'm using buff activation when hit, so it always procs whenever I get hit, so that's one less button to press by the way. Really good. Another thing to talk about is Sprint. A lot of people don't like Sprint, but there is a one big reason why I am using this on my hardcore character. And that thing is immune to status effect until end of duration. And status effect is CC, bind, stun, and all the dots, wound, burn, chill, and etc. So what it means that I have 2.8 seconds of basically status effect immunity. The cooldown is 5, so if we check the uptime, it's gonna be 2.8, 4.62. So the uptime is only like 60%, but it actually means a lot when you are in when you are doing hardcore. I wouldn't say it's a good movement ability, but I'm still I'm still using it and I'm probably gonna keep using it on my all seasonal hardcore chunkters as long as it doesn't get any nerfs. It gives you a little bit of armor, it lets you move through enemies. It's it's a really nice one, it's a really nice one. I like this one. And everything else on my skill board is kinda not crazy. It's it's what you're gonna find on most of the skill boards. The, I did show my charms a little bit, but there is actually not that much to talk about in here. My charms are kinda... whatever. I only have like one good charm, which is this one. Everything else could be changed. I'm aiming for some crit rate, crit damage, and then... Strike damage amp on legendary prefix or maximize damage on hit. My KS star is nothing amazing too. A little bit of crit rate, a little bit of crit damage and maximize damage. And the reason why I did 230 Alyssa, 230 level and 140 Amal, the main reason was that I wanted to test because it was a new thing and I really don't know what is better. Is 230 to 30 plus 140 or is it 4 4 times 140? I don't know which would be the better choice on this build. 
I kept this one because I actually switched from 4x 140, but that was my poison build. And when I switched to my physical build, I couldn't make a comparison anymore, but I can only say that, that this was like a nice damage increase, by the way. But which one is better? No idea. Some people are saying if you are doing conversion, if you have like convert to physical or convert to any other element, it's better to do 4x 140, but there is no like ground that I don't know what it's based on and on how the map was done. So I'm just leaving it right there basically. Another thing that's important to talk about is my Lacrima. And my Lacrima is very simple. It's Cause Confusion Hamal Harvest. And it's really easy to see why it's why am I using this. It gives me 16 fire damage on every hit, 15 cold damage on every hit, and damage amplification against shield and burning enemies. Basically, this is 45% damage amp for me. And on Lacrima, this is a lot. <clears throat> of course, if I had some legendary Lacrima, I would add something on top, but I couldn't drop a legendary Lacrima in those two months or whatever that time frame for season 4 is. So I kept using this one. This is a really good one early. Plus, this call damage enables me to freeze the enemies. That's really good stuff. And because I'm generating those lightning energies that I talked about, and lightning energies give you status effect rate, and status effect rate is freeze, stun, and at the same time dots like venom, burn, etc. It works really well in here. I stun, I freeze, it's really good. I can show you my zodiacs, but... Not that much stop has changed. So I'm running Aphros. Projectile damage plus physical. This is basically very default stuff. Excellent senses plus nimble excavation. Projectile into area damage. I'm running status effect rate. This is this what enables me to chill, stun, and Apply Venom at the same time, add to my application of Venom. This one is pretty simple, I'm running Man on every hit. Because Poisoning of Arrows actually hits multiple times. So that one mana is actually not one mana, it's more like 30 mana on every single, on every single skill use. Elaborate Attack just for that flat critical chance. Annihilation, just for area effects. Then Confirm Kill, it's basically damage jump against unit enemies, which is really nice, plus stun rate. You actually don't need these stun rates, because if you generate a little bit of lightning energies, you have enough status effect. But this is nice addition. I'm just pointing that out that it's not necessary to stun this. This part is not necessary to stun the enemies, if you have some lightning energies. This is simple stuff, we are not melee damage, so we don't get that melee damage dampening, we are projectile, so it doesn't matter for us, area effect is really nice, projectile damage jump of course, and projectile count. This is my additional physical on, on every hit, this is basically 7 points for 10% damage jump, it's really simple math. I'm also running lightning energies to apply shock. As Shock is really a big part of my damage, and they don't have any other lighting damage sources, that's why I have this on my Zodiacs. <clears throat> my spec is Hammer, simple, just like default stuff. The same ones that I recommend on other builds that benefits from area and from specifically Hammer nodes. Yep, this how it looks like, really simple stuff. Rune, Rune Master levels, it's really, I, I, I didn't think a lot about it, It's there's probably better choices than this, <clears throat> but because I'm running so much, I'm basically running every single type of damage that I can run in this game, and I apply every single type of that status effect, so 
All of my points are basically invested into damage amplification against physical status, poison status, lightning status, <coughs> cold status, and lightning status, because it works on this build. Because I have every single type of damage. This is probably the most simplest choice you can make to just pick up those. If you apply that type of status, I would say 10% damage amp is a lot, by the way. And they have basically 41% amp just from my rune master levels, which is crazy big. But yeah. I was thinking about if I want to talk about jewels. Because jewels is probably the best way to fix your build depending on what you need. That's... And... I can't talk about what like what's best, what's best in slot, because it highly depends on the build, but I can talk about what I'm using and I can give you some reasoning for it. So basically I'm using fire energy effect. So fire energy effect right now is really good because that's the reason I um, I have so much damage multiplier whenever I generate fire energies. And you can see, I have this one on quite a few items and it stacks, it stacks and it goes higher. I would say if you generate fire energies and you have some white jewels, go for fire energy effect. It's really good. It's gonna multiply your damage by quite a bit. At the same time, I'm, I'm running some of the resource cost dampening because I'm not using convert mana node and I'm using five toggles. So my mana right now is a, in a little bit of a tight spot. If I get like resource cost amp or recovery effect dampening on the map, I have to be careful because I'm running out of mana, but I'm blasting. I'm blasting, I don't care about mana. That's why I crafted some instant mana potions, but that's that's not the way to do it. Yeah, my belt, I'm running on the black jewels. I picked up only damage amplifications. I think on black jewels, damage amp is the easiest one to make, to do. Yeah, again, damage amp on the black and fire energy on the white. And that's the cold energy one. Again, some resource cost dampening. I'm just like, my jewels are basically just whatever I need the most at the same, at the same, uh, uh, at that time. HP, because I'm running kind of low HP, <clears throat> but yeah. Star Jewels, Star Jewels are interesting. There is not much you can talk about it. On Star Jewels, there are so many good things that you can pick up, and they don't want to say what you should pick up, because it highly depends on the build. And I think if you're already on the stage that you do Star Jewels, I think you know what you want, and I think you understand about the game enough. At least I hope so. But Star Jewels are insane, by the way. Like something like I'm gonna I'm gonna show. This is what I'm aiming for: annihilation, area effect, and area damage amplification would be freaking perfect. But yeah. For the last one, I'm gonna show you the map, right? Because I think that's important. People want to know what the hell is going on. So I'm gonna add one map. Skill and rune cooldown amplification, not a big deal. 20 plus 27. Let's run a fast one. I'm not, this is my mapping build basically. I'm not using any potions. I just buy some guild buffs, but those guild buffs are just for my HP basically and a little bit of hit rate. But right now with those, those that's how the map looks like. I don't know if I'm running high effects by the way, but this is how it looks like. And if you look at my energies, I keep stacking my energies and it's only gonna take a few seconds. Sub, I would say like at most sub one minute to stack everything. And then if I get lucky to get like uh, something like poison energy or lightning energy, I'm gonna be able to, to sustain those also. But yeah, 10 out of 10 and it's not gonna get any lower than that. I'm gonna keep it for the wall map run. I don't know if I could keep it without my Boreal's Horizon. I mean, these three energies I would keep even without my Boreal's Horizon, but I couldn't keep my Poison energies and Lightning energies because those are basically only based on that 4% chance from Extract Energy and then on that 8% from my Boreal's Belt. But yeah. Let's 
You can see that sometimes my damage goes really low, but that's only because of the curses. Because some of the curses can reduce your hit rate and critical damage. So the damage on the maps become kind of... Has a lot of variables, basically. But yeah. Simple stuff. I'm thinking about doing another build. I said on Deadly Poison Claw video that I'm gonna do Deadly Poison Claw. But right now, I really don't know what I'm gonna go for. I'm kinda playing a little bit of other games. A season for me is kinda finished. I'm not really looking for any more damage. Cause I'm not looking for to do plus 35s. I'm not that big of a grinder and... I'm kinda done with the crafting also. I would love to craft some things but... I'm probably gonna craft those throughout the what's left of the season, but I'm really not gonna aim for those. It's not like my priority or anything. My priority right now is to find some other build to look at to play something else. Yeah, I'm starting to generate some... Wait, what kind of energy is that? I don't even know what kind of energy is that. Yeah, lightning energy. So, because I generate lightning energies right now, that increases my status effect rate. So, makes me apply dots and hard to see. I don't know what terms to use to make it more understandable, but basically, yeah. This is how it looks like. It's not really fast map, I'm talking too much, but... And I'm not using any potions. I'm not really a fan of, on a, of a potions, but if you're looking to push some maps and you lack a little bit of damage, I highly suggest to use some potions. Don't be like me. I I'm ki I'm kind of lazy bastard, by the way. I'm a little bit of a lazy bastard. And actually, at the same time, let's go into the training arena. I want to. I I forgot to show the proof, right? I forgot to show the proof. So I'm gonna do this. And actually, at the same time, let's look at this, right? My I only have 600 physical damage multiplier right now. 650. And I only have what I only have uh, defense on the defense side. I only have ten percent damage taken, dampening is basic, basically. Oh, sorry. And my status effect rate is kind of low. It's eight, eight, eight. Basically, this is from from the zodiac node, and this is from the zodiac node, right? So let's start looking at this. It might take some time to actually for me to get the to get the lightning energy, but let's wait a little bit. Let's see. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, I, looks like I'm starting to generate, but it's poisons, fires. I have some fires. I can show you how my physical damage changed. Wait, can I press on it? Yeah, it's two point seven k. So I had six hundred. And with fire energies, it's 2.7k. That's another reason why I don't have that much damage multiplier. Because I could increase my damage multiplier from some crafts, but it's it's not right. Because when I generate my fire energies, if I get like 100 damage multiplier on top of 2.7k, it's not a big difference. It doesn't account to for a lot of damage in this case. That's one of the important things. What else? Oh, damage shaken dampenings? Yeah, so right now, because I'm running that uh, cold energy on my quiver, I'm like 60, 60, 60, 66.9% right now. I'm still not capped, but I don't want to waste another jewel spot for this. That's how it looks like. Can I get some lightning energies? Oh, I got some lightning energy. So, as you can see, it goes up. It works on bleed, burn, chill, choke, venom. It works on stun, on wound, on freeze. It works on everything because it's status effect. So keep that in mind. Basically, lightning energies is really good. If you want to apply those dots and you want to apply some hard CC. Yeah.
So, thanks for watching. I think I said everything I wanted to. If I didn't say something, I'm gonna say it in some other videos. But for now, I'm done. And I'm gonna be looking for some other build to do. I'm kinda thinking about either Deadly Poison Claw or Crescent Slash, one or the other. But this is all I've got today. This is a long video, by the way, but I really want to get it out because... I packed a lot of info in this video and a lot of explanation and I didn't want to cut those videos into small ones because it's get it gets lost on YouTube. <laughs> but yeah. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this one and see you on the next one.